One of the most recognisable locomotives on the modern British railway network, the Class 60 is a machine that proved to be the last British-built freight engine in history, rounding out a near 200-year legacy by providing one of the strongest designs to ever operate on the main line. However, no more than a decade after its introduction, most Class 60s found themselves laid up in long-term storage at depots all across the UK, as the primary freight operator of the nation opted to standardise its fleet with the Canadian-built Class 66, putting these nearly new but severely flawed machines out of work. The origins of the Class 60 go back to the early 1980s, when government policy was leaning towards privatisation, while traditional management methods and systems were being superseded by new ideas to make the industry more competitive. British Rail had recently commissioned a succession of heavy freight locomotives in the form of the Class 56s and Class 58s, which had taken over the most arduous duties from the general purpose diesels of the modernisation plan, such as the Class 37 and Class 40. However, there were many issues regarding the introduction of these two classes, specifically with the Class 56, which illustrated severe unreliability caused mainly by the poor build quality of its original batch of units built by Romanian firm Electroputeri, which required heavy remediation work. At the same time, the availability figures for the Class 56 and 58 could not match the stringent requirements of private firms that started to operate their own trains on the UK mainline network, most notably Foster Yeoman, which found that the reliability of BR's locomotive fleet was so poor that they contracted General Motors of America to develop a diesel engine with a minimum 95% availability. The result was the Class 59, a modular variant of the American SD40-2 that went above and beyond Yeoman's expectations, and soon saw additional members purchased by other private firms wishing to run their trains on the network, thus threatening British Rail's ability to provide domestic traction. With this concern, BR engineers began experimenting with new forms of power units to help determine a replacement for older diesel locomotives, with Ruston and Murley's power plants being experimentally fitted into Class 37s to test their performance prior to their introduction into a brand new class of freight engine. Although a great deal of money was spent on this proposal, this scheme was abandoned in the face of the British government deeming the scheme uneconomic, identifying short-length work such as Speedlink as not worth investment and thus directing the future fiscal policy towards rolling stock and facilities used in heavy block traffic such as steel, coal and aggregates. This decision meant that the only money for new locomotives likely to be forthcoming would be for the heavy freight sector, and thus a specification was prepared for a new generation freight engine that would not be a repeat of the previous unsatisfactory designs like the Class 56 and Class 58, instead following the same track as the General Motors Class 59s imported by Foster Yeoman. Much to the chagrin of the management, figures within British Rail's own trainload petroleum sector had sought permission to buy a contingent of Class 59s to replace their Class 47s and 56s on oil trains, but this was shot down immediately by a politically conscious executive staff. Consequently, British Rail drew up a specification for a locomotive in the same power category as the Class 59, which was to include many of the features of the new American metal, including a wheel creep computer adhesion system that was to be far more reliable than any previous home-built product. Three companies bid for the contract, with Metro Camel conducting some early concepts before bowing out of the project, while GEC offered what was in effect a UK-built Class 59 after plans to develop its own design fell through. In the end, Brush Traction of Loughborough offered a locomotive to its own design, powered by an enlarged version of either the Murleys or Ruston engines that had been tested in the Class 37s, British Rail eventually rejecting the Ruston engine as it failed to pass emissions requirements, leaving the Murley's engine as the preferred power plant for the upcoming Brush-built product. In early 1988, Brush was given an order for up to 100 of the new design at a cost of £120 million, on the condition that first delivery would take place within a year, and would be built with a strong financial incentive for the locomotives to be both economical to operate and have a high availability. Production started almost immediately, with many of the components subcontracted to other manufacturers. The body being designed to assimilate some of the stress loadings within itself and was built by Procore of Wakefield, while the power unit was constructed at the Murleys plant at Stockport and electrical components came from the Hawker Sidley Group. Final assembly would take place at Loughborough, with the first Class 60, 60001, 
leaving the production line in June 1989, being handed over to British Rail and promptly tested at the Derby Technical Center, whereupon a number of issues were discovered, particularly with the microprocessor-controlled wheel creep system and the suspension. All of these faults thus had to be corrected before the locomotives could be passed as fit for work, with modifications taking almost 16 months to complete at great frustration to the British Rail management, who were forced to maintain the use of rapidly aging machines from the 1950s and 60s in order to cover this delay. The situation became so strained that, with 40 locomotives delivered and almost all of them not working, the order for the remaining 60 units was almost cancelled, though in the end, all 100 Class 60s were completed, but reportedly had 10,000 warranty faults across the fleet, averaging 100 faults per engine. This proved to be something of an embarrassment when compared to the Class 59s, which essentially entered service within weeks of their arrival from Canada, though on the plus side, the Class 60s had a higher continuous tractive effort than any other diesel locomotive in Britain. Introduction into service would see 35 units allocated to the coal sector, 25 to construction, 22 to metals, and 18 to petroleum, but by the time the Class 60s were actually fit for service, other arrangements had to be made that saw these machines allocated elsewhere, and thus many wore decals of the wrong sector to which they actually belonged. Upon entry into service, the Class 60s quickly displaced double-headed Class 33s from aggregate traffic, as well as pairs of Class 20s from coal trains, Class 31s from petroleum, and Classes 26 and 73 from other duties. But due to ongoing reliability issues, it wasn't long before up to 10% of the fleet was back with brush undergoing rectification work, while others were laid up at depots with various faults. Such was the problematic nature of the Class 60s that on average during these early days, only 1,000 hours of useful work each year could be garnered from these machines. In 1994, the fleet was divided up equally among the three new shadow freight operators during the privatisation of British Rail, Load Hall, Trans Rail and Mainline Freight, 52 being assigned to Mainline, 31 to Load Hall and 17 to Trans Rail, though due to the quality finish of the Rail Freight two-tone grey livery, most remained in their original colours with company decals, while five received load hall livery and three mainline blue. Throughout the 1990s, various initiatives saw reliability improve to double its previous level, but regardless of this work, the Class 60 still couldn't compete with the unbeatable availability figures of the Class 59s, while upon the formation of English, Welsh and Scottish Railways, or EWS, as the UK's primary freight operator during 1995, all Class 60s subsequently fell under the auspices of this new company. Almost immediately, the EWS management were acquainted with the fact that their fleet of diesel locomotives, ranging from the smaller Class 31, 33 and 37, to the heavy freight Class 56, 58 and 60, were either severely aged machines or illustrated reliability figures that were costing the firm dearly in lost work. Therefore, EWS placed a batch order for 250 of what were originally designated the Class 61, though this was later changed to Class 66 by the time the first of these new locomotives arrived during 1998, the Class 66 being an evolution of the earlier Class 59s and illustrated a modular design that achieved the same levels of availability, despite the fact that these new locomotives could not meet the same haulage levels as the Class 60s. Nevertheless, the Class 66 introduced reliability and standardization that easily outstripped its inherited fleet from British Rail, thus allowing for mass withdrawals of older locomotives, including Class 31s, 33s, 37s, 47s, 56s and 58s, while the Class 60s saw widespread reductions in their operational numbers as Class 66s moved in to replace them. At its peak, the number of Class 60s in storage at one time could be as high as 40% during the mid-2000s, with Toton Depot near Nottingham being a notorious Class 60 graveyard, with dozens of these machines either being lined up in remote sidings or peppered around the rail yard, though individual locomotives out of traffic varied from time to time. By the time EWS was handed to the control of German railway operator Deutsche Bahn to form DB Schenker in 2008, 60 Class 60s were still in everyday use with the company, though this figure had plummeted by mid-2010 to the point that at any one time, only 10 active Class 60s could be found at work on the main line. Though it appeared that the Class 60s would soon be rendered extinct from the UK network in a manner similar to the Class 58, 
D.B. Schenker instead trialled modifications on two locomotives, following which a plan to overhaul around 20 for further service was announced, while at the same time a further 20 were offered for sale, though none initially changed hands. Eventually, in 2014, 10 locomotives were sold to Collis Rail, which was subsequently sold in July 2018 to GB Rail Freight, while in March 2019, DC Rail acquired four units that had been overhauled by DB at Toten Depot. However, the number of units still active on the network remains dwindling, with DB Cargo currently hosting 14 operational units, alongside 19 DC Rail examples and 13 with GB Rail Freight, while three, 60050, 60081 and 60086, are preserved, and one, 60006, was scrapped in January 2020. The rest, though, continue to languish in storage, primarily at Toton, with 50 units remaining out of work, most of these locomotives being in such a poor condition that it's highly unlikely that these machines will ever work again. In summary, while the Class 60 promised many things with its exceptional power and sturdy design, the reliability of these purposeful-looking machines was ultimately the Achilles' heel of what should have been a freight locomotive that put the likes of the Class 59 to shame. Instead, the failure of the Class 60 to perform as expected during those early years proved to be the incentive for EWS wishing to procure a modular fleet of diesel engines, and with that the Class 60 soon found themselves pushed out of place by the new American metal. Nevertheless, while their numbers have diminished, these locomotives, following overhaul and modification, have now proven themselves to be the success story as originally anticipated back in the late 1980s, and for hauling the heaviest freight trains in the country, there is little better in terms of traction that can truly match the power of the venerable Class 60s.